Welcome back to another episode of the Hermit Poetry Series. I'm Neil Aiken, and on this channel I read poetry, mostly work by contemporary poets, occasionally poems of my own, and once in a while poems from the past. Today's poem comes to us from Campbell McGrath from his collection Road Atlas, published by Echo Press in 1999. The poem I'm going to read is the first poem in the collection and is entitled The Prose Poem. On the map it is precise and rectilinear as a chessboard, though driving past you would hardly notice it. This boundary line or ragged margin, a shallow swale that cups a simple trickle of water, less rill than rivulet, more gully than dell, a tangled ditch grown up throughout with a fearsome assortment of wildflowers and bracken. There is no fence, though here and there a weathered post asserts a former claim, strands of fallen wire taken by the dust. To the left, a cornfield carries into the distance, dips and rises to the blue sky, a rolling plain of green and healthy plants aligned in close order, row upon row upon row. To the right, field of wheat, field of hay, young grasses breaking the soil, filling their allotted land with the rich, slow-waving spectacle of their grain. As for the farmers, they are, for the most part, indistinguishable. Here the tractor is red, there yellow, here a pair of dirty hands, there a pair of dirty hands. They are cultivators of the soil, they grow crop, crops by pattern, by acre, by foresight, by habit. What corn is to one, wheat is to the other, and though to some eyes the similarities outweigh the differences, it would be as unthinkable for the second to commence planting corn as for the first to switch over to wheat. What happens in the gully between them is no concern of theirs, they say, so long as the plow stays out. The weeds stay in the ditch where they belong, though anyone would notice the wind-sown Cornstalks poking up their shaggy ears like young lovers run off into the bushes, and the kinship of these wild grasses with those the farmer cultivates is too obvious to mention. Sage and dun-colored stalks hanging their noble heads, hoarding exotic burrs and seas, and yet it is neither corn nor wheat that truly flourishes there, nor some jackalapian hybrid of the two. What grows in that place is possessed of a beauty all its own, ramshackle and unexpected even in winter, when the wind hangs icicles from the skeletons of briars and small tracks cross the snow in search of forgotten grain. In the spring, the little trickle of water swells to welcome frogs and minnows, a muskrat, a family of turtles, nesting doves in the verdant grass. In summer, it is a thoroughfare for raccoons and opossums, field mice, swallows and blackbirds, migrating egrets, a passing fox. In autumn, the geese avoid its abundance, seeking out windrows of toppled stalks, fatter grain, more quickly discerned, more easily digested, of those that travel the local road, Few pay that fertile hollow any mind, even those with an eye of what blossoms, vetch and timothy, early for scythia, the fatted calf in the fallow field, the rabbit running for cover, the hawk's descent from the lightning-struck tree. You've passed this way yourself many times, and can tell me, if you would, do the formal fields end where the valley begins, or does everything that surrounds us emerge? From its embrace. And that was the prose poem by Campbell McGrath um, from Road Atlas, 1999 Echo Press. Um, if you enjoyed this reading and this poem, please do check out the description of the of the video where you'll find more information about Campbell McGrath as well as where to purchase a copy of this book. Um, there is also information at the bottom of the description, uh, a listing of other projects that I'm currently working on and uh, other ways that you can get a hold of me. Um, if you want to support this channel, you can do so very simply. Just hit the like button, hit the thumbs up, um, or subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. You'll be notified every time there's a new video, which is every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Um, and if you'd like to support us in other ways, feel free to comment below with suggestions of other poets or poems that we could feature 
or share these uh, videos as links in social media and encourage others to check them out. Um, in all these ways, you uh, help expand the reach of these videos and ensure that others can find these poets and these poems. Um, I hope in some small way that this is a, an opportunity for you and for others to discover poets that maybe you don't know or that you do know and perhaps haven't heard recently, um, or discover poems that you might not realize you have a connection with. Um, I, uh, I look forward to producing these videos and I'm grateful for the opportunity to use technology to reach you um, and to bridge the gap between us. Uh, here I am sitting in Saskatchewan, Canada, and there you are, wherever you are, Australia, Wyoming, uh, North Dakota, or I don't know, <laughs> Costa Rica, uh, Siberia, uh, wherever you are, you can taste a little bit of the poetry that's, hap <coughs> that's happening in the world and some of the things that inspire me and hopefully inspire you. Um, so until next time, stay safe and warm. It is winter for most of us. And uh, wishing you all the very best during this holiday season. Uh, hoping that you have opportunities to be connected with friends and loved ones. Um, to celebrate, uh, to be unified, and hopefully to be healthy together. Um, looking forward to, uh, well, to <laughs> whatever comes in this coming week. Uh, I have some... Well, I have some particular poems that I hope to, to line up for this coming week and look forward to sharing them with you. And so until then, stay safe and well and keep on reading, keep writing, keep creating work um, out there. At your opportunity, your means of connecting with others. I will do the same. So um, all the best to you. And we'll be back again soon with more poetry and more reading. And be well. Bye.